Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be doing episode 166 of checking out one of your guys' solar systems. So today we have got one system to do from the user Abnormally Large Frog in Discord, so a massive thank you to him for sending this simulation in. But without further ado, let's just get straight into it. So this one is called the Alcor Binary System and apparently it's got a lot of reading which we like, so let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and find it. Now it's on the workshop here, it should be in my subscribe at the bottom here, yeah there we are. Right, let's see what for us. Right. Okay, and yeah, this one I believe does have quite a lot of reading. So yeah, let's get into this. Right. So we'll start off in the middle like we always do. All oh, those rings are looking. Look at those rings. I'm liking that already. Right. So let's uh, see where we are. So all the top. So Alcor is a K-type star with 26 objects orbiting around it. Four of those objects contain some form of life. Alcor has a strange looking asteroid belt. This is because about three million years ago, a massive rocky planet went too close to the star and got torn to shreds. There's a very high risk of be or there being numerous impacts for the planets in the inner solar system. Okay, right. So that's the uh, star itself. So we can see a huge uh, asteroid belt worth of uh, stuff there. There's actually two of them as well. If you look carefully, you can see there's one closer and then there's one slightly further out as well so right first object is Tara Tara over here by the looks of it or is it oh no it's this one here never mind right okay so here it is okay so this is where we started actually so let's turn my graphics up because I think I think I had them down so I was just doing performance tests so there you go make it look a little more pretty right so first planet here looking good right so uh, this planet is a mineral rich boiling planet it has an average temperature of 72.2 degrees celsius and a minimum temperature of 56.7 the mining colony has been established from space ferran aliens known as the Varin from the neighboring sister star of alcor right okay so there's a good look of it there got some city lights going on as well we always like those nice reddish atmosphere we can have a look underneath as well good look underneath the atmosphere so there you go so pretty exotic colors going on there it's also got some craters on it as well look at that hey so let's go ahead and uh, move on. Alrighty. So that's the first object there. Nice thumbs up from me already. Right, next up we have got... So now we're on Tara Tara. Okay, so this is a vast carbon-based biosphere, right? Okay. Ooh, liking that. Right. The planet appears purple from space because most of the plants use chemical known as uh, retinol. Tara Tara has an ecosystem more diverse than Earth's and has a dominant species currently in the Stone Age. Okay. These Stone Age creatures have an aggressive behaviour and it is advised not to visit the planet if you don't want to risk your ship being attacked by the tribesmen. The moon of Tara Tara have an elliptical orbit, making flooding a huge risk at times. Right. Okay, cool stuff. It's also got a moon there, so we'll quickly hop onto the moon before we look at both of them together. Okay, so this is an ammonia moon orbiting Tara Tara. It is rich in iron and silicate, making the gravity heavier than it appears. It rains acid on the planet, occasionally causing its beautiful shapes in its mountains and rocks. Cool liking that so as we can see mostly a, a sort of desert sort of colored world underneath nice sort of bluish atmosphere going on it. a very cool view of the parent planet from here as well I mean let's just get a cool little uh, sort of a uh, view of the two together so let's turn all that off yeah look at that that'd be a cool image for the uh, thumbnail I think but having the planet just sort of in the atmosphere haze of the other moon that's looking pretty cool to me right so onto the planet itself here let's go ahead and have a look underneath all of that so we can see the ocean colours, if we look down here, liquid water. So that's currently a bluish colour. So we can see, yeah, a very, very dark bluish colour. So yeah, very ocean heavy, like you said there. Cool. So there we go. We can see there's a few little glitches, but probably just because the game's updated to just ignore those. Um, let's put that all back on there. So yeah, cool. I'm liking it. That is a, it's a quite an interesting, unique looking world there. So there's Tara Tara and its moon. Right, moving on now. So let's uh, take a big jump out. So all this and labels back on. Forgot I rotated it, so let's rotate it the correct way back, right? Okay, so Tara Tara, now we are heading to this one. So, add shoe sticker, hope I'm saying that one right. Okay, so here it is. So, this is an ocean planet which lacks an atmosphere. So for some reason, the water on this planet does not freeze and stays liquid, vaporing the Vern scientists. So, a water well with no atmosphere. So, as we can see, very, very dark water color, obviously, very, very dark shade of blue once more. So, there you go. So, just, yeah, ocean world. There is that one. Not often you see people do ocean worlds with no atmosphere. So that's quite an interesting, unique object there. Because not many people do those. Um, right, okay, so I've got that one. That's right, so where we're heading next. So Noria. Where's Noria? Okay, so we're taking a jump out here. This Tylo object isn't mentioned, is it? I think you must have forgotten it, but let's visit it anyway. So Tylo. What have we got over here? It's 
got a moon as well, okay. Let's uh, rotate it around, get rid of that weird glitch spot. So as we can see, this one appears to be quite similar to the one of the ones we saw before, with, like the desert-like sort of appearance of the bluish atmosphere, around like that moon on the previous planet. So there is that, and this one also has a moon of its uh, self as well. So there we go, pretty cool view of that as well. There we are, there is those two, right. So we are heading to, so it's Noria next, right, let's uh, head down here. Right, Noria. Oh, it's also a, uh, I saw a hidden object there, what was that? It's got one of those weird black trail glitches, and notice a gas giant in the distance as well, how cool is that? Right, so Noria is an ocean planet with silicon-based multicellular life forms. The atmosphere of Noria contains zero oxygen and mainly methane and ammonia. Okay, so it's like a titan-like world then, on first glance. The life on Noria is exotic. And researchers are planning on setting up an underwater base on Noria to see what kind of exotic life thrives there. Noria has two moons causing massive tides on the planet. Cool. So, like you said, it's an ocean planet with silicon-based multicellular and then methane and ammonia. So it's like a hotter version of Titan, is my guess. Yeah, so it's got positive temperatures. So this is like a warmed-up Titan with liquid water. Still with that methane and ammonia. So it's got a similar sort of Titan-like appearance. It's got like the yellowy-orange hazy atmosphere. Cool. I rate that. That's cool, that is. So looking underneath, there you go, so obviously the ocean, methane, ammonia, atmosphere on top of it, to boot with it. Cool. Right, next up we got the moon here. So this is uh, Salber. It's one of the moons of Noria and has a rather small atmosphere as well as small lakes possibly containing singular celled life forms. Hey. Or, or celled organisms, sorry. Uh, not much research has been done on this planet, so it's still quite a mystery. I like the little patches on that, that's cool. Really like that gas giant in the background there. And then I think the other moon was this one. So this was Nostra, so it's got that black trail glitch. Okay, so this one was once a moon with intelligent alien life in the atomic age. These aliens were bug-like in appearance. They ended up getting in nuclear war and destroyed all life on the moon. Okay, so this world's just a barren wasteland, nothing left of it. A few little of atmosphere, but yeah, looking pretty, uh, pretty wrecked. So there are those ones. Okay, so next up we're going to a world called Arastra. So whereabouts is that one? Uh, is it, I'm guessing it's this one over here. It's got yeah the trail glitch on it. So I've got there's two large gas giants sort of chilling in this area. Let's just give it a trail so we can see it's all a bit properly. So there it is. Okay, right. So this world. Let's go ahead and close that. Right. This is a gas giant nearly the size of Alcor. What was it really? Okay. So it's a pretty large object then. Uh, it has exotic colours uh, which baffle scientists from the sister star. It has nine moons. Right. So size of it, 1.13 Jupiters. Okay. Right, so now onto the moons. I'm guessing, I think he said he did a description for all of those uh, when he, in his post on my Discord. So here it is, the so first moon. Okay, so let's turn off the light orbits, make it a little more interesting. Labels as well, I guess. So this moon here. Right, so this is one of the many moons and it was an answer rogue dwarf planet that was captured um, some five million years ago. There is said to be ancient artifacts on this planet that the interplanetary traveler came across. Okay, awesome stuff there. Right, next up we've got Mole over here. This is a moon with large amounts of water and ammonia ices. Oh, I'm liking the colour scheme on it. That's a, it's got an atmosphere as well, if you look carefully, a bluish one. Cool. Okay, so this is a, it has liquid methane features on the surface, such as lakes and rivers, and a thin atmosphere of nitrogen and methane. When the mountains have reflect, or have light reflected on them, they allow rainbow a steep colour, which scientists are studying. Cool. Liking that. That's cool. So there is Mole. Uh, next up we've got Yaren, so let's uh, locate Yaren. Okay, so Yaren is a moon which is basically a gas ball, or a giant ball of iron, not a gas ball, giant ball of iron. It's massively, or it's massive density makes it incredibly difficult to catch in orbit without crashing into the surface. It is a massive mining colony on the planet that uses the iron to construct buildings and hulls for vehicles. Nice. So there's that world there, so an all heavy ball of iron. You can see there's a few little lights and stuff of the mining colonies. Looking cool. So there is it, Yaren. Right, next up we have got uh, Minister. I hope I'm saying that one right. Over here. Okay, this is once a large rogue planet floating through the galaxy. Eventually it came across the Alcor system and was pulled into a tight elliptical orbit around the main star. It was ripped to shreds by the gravitational pull of the main star before it was flung out and its orbit towards um, Arastia, where it is now one of its moons. Cool, so this is an interstellar rogue object. Nice. Right, so there's that one. Uh, next up, we have got this one over here, so uh, Titustia, over here. This is once a vast jungle planet flourishing with life. Um, 
Over time, the core stopped rotating, causing the magnetic field to disappear. Soon afterwards, the atmosphere was stripped away by solar wind. Now all that is left are massive fossils and large deposits of coal. Okay, so you can see all the uh, coal areas, the black areas there. Cool. Right, next up we have got Fawn. So that was somewhere. Whereabouts is it? Fawn. Where's Fawn? Trying to locate it. Where, where is it? So, uh, are we done those ones? I can't find the darn thing unless it's all the way. No? Well, where is it? Because I don't want to. I don't want to use the search menu because it's going to kind of spoil what's to come. So, yeah, I can't. I generally cannot find it. So, it's a silica iron uh, rich planet. Um, as a thin atmosphere, nitrogen noble gas is often huge iron oxide dust kicked up by thermal winds. Huh, interesting. And then uh, lastly, we've got the other moon down here. So this is now uh, this one. Okay. So this is the, yeah, however you say that. I'm not going to try and say that because I'm going to scrap it. Uh, it's one of the newest moons to join the orbit. It is a small rocky planet. Little research has been done to the planet. So it's quite a mystery. Okay. Right, and then lastly, we had uh, Tantasta, which was this one. This is a moon containing massive amounts of organic molecules on its surface, which gives it a greenish colour. Guy, okay. So still no sign of where this fawn object is. I'm trying to just have a little quick peek through all the orbits. So where is fawn? So we've got Mole, Yaron, Talos over there. I don't know where the form one is. We'll have to see if we can find that later on. Maybe it's got a black trail glitch. I think it has. There it is. Look how hard that was to spot. Right, so here is form. Oh, yes. Here we go. So it's definitely the most colourful of the moons. Okay, so it's a silica and iron rich planet, like we said. Uh, we plan to set up mining expeditions on the surface as a thin atmosphere of nitrogen and noble gases. Often has huge iron oxide dust cows kicked up by thermal winds. Yes, that's cool. That is right. So we found it. So, yeah, the. That darn trail glitch is really annoying, isn't it? There you go. So that's where it should be. Cool. Right, moving on. So next up, we're going to this... Uh, so if we head back to Noria again, we have that gas giant in the background there. I mean, how cool is that? So this is... Uh, Kirsta. So it's the second largest gas giant in the Alcor system. It has three moons. So let's go ahead and take a jump over to it. So here it is. All right, cool. Right. So first moon down here. It's an alpine moon with complex multicellular life. I'm liking the patches of water on it as well. Due to the tilt of the planet, there are extremely drastic seasons from hot to cold, making these animals on the moon um, extremophiles. I think I remember uh, reading about them somewhere. Oh, I can't even remember. I've definitely heard that before. Um, Tuster was once an extremely volcanic moon. So that's the next moon out. After the moon cooled, the volcanoes stopped being active, but there's still a ton of ash and soot on the atmosphere, giving the atmosphere a black grayish color. Previously volcanic world. And then Minas uh, Tan over here. It's an iron rich moon. No expeditions have done this rocky moon due to the fact that there isn't nearly as much iron as the moon of um, Yaron. Yeah, remember Yaron from the previous gas giant. So cool stuff there. Okay, cool. Right, so now we're taking a big jump out. So on the last few objects, this was a huge jump here. Okay, so Troust is the sister star of Alcor and is an M class star. One planet orbits a star with its moon. Okay, so we've got obviously a smaller red dwarf like one here. Checking its stats quickly. So, yeah, quite small. 1.31 Jupiter. So, yeah, not the largest at all there. Okay, and then its planet over here. Um, I, I can't say that one. I'm sorry. Kalasor is a silica rich planet with rings orbiting. Um, its moon is a highly advanced being. It's glowing. Look, it's glowing. What is going on there? I don't know though. It's glowing and it looks cool. So there's that one, and then uh, moon. Okay, so the last object in here, very happy. It's got blue, it's got flipping blue city lights on it as well. Look at that. Oh, yes. Look at that. Oh, I like that. That's a cool one. So that glitch is kind of annoying, though. Let's just hide it so we can't see it. Look at that city lights. Oh. Right, so this is a continental moon orbiting um, Kalasor. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, it has a highly advanced species known as the Vern, so they were mentioned earlier. The Vern have caused massive environmental damage due to them being so industrial. They do not realise how much danger they're in because uh, they'll be dead by the time it's their problem. Right, okay, and yeah, there is their uh, object there. Cool, so that's the full um, system done now. Very nice lineup of stuff indeed. Really, really enjoyed that one. So hopefully you guys did as well. Let us know your feedback down below in the comments because this was a cool one. Right, so let's uh, line them all up. So there's the full lineup, so we'll see... Uh, 
main star. It's not too much larger than the biggest gas giant. And also we got the red dwarf there that we just visited. Then we got the uh, other gas giant and onto the Rockies. I really, really like Noria. That was a cool one. I really like that Titan-like object. Then we had um, this one here, Tara Tara. That was a cool one. And then, uh, then we had that. Yeah, this was the first one we saw. That was cool as well. Um, and then onto the moons down here. I really did like the one we just saw. That was cool. But yeah, there we go. It says a full lineup. And Fawn. I did like Fawn as well. It was cool. So yeah, there we go. There is a full lineup of the uh, whole system, guys. So let us know, yeah, again, your thoughts uh, down below in the comments of this one. Yeah, if you liked it, let's see if we can go for 40 likes on today's video, guys. And also, if you'd like to send in your own simulation for this series, let me know down below um, in my Discord server. So you can join that in the link in the description and you can uh, go ahead and upload your simulations on there. If you, uh, if you wish so yeah we are but yeah um, again a massive thank you for watching today's video and a, yeah, a massive thank you to a normally large frog for sending this simulation in as well very big thumbs up from me and yeah hopefully hopefully you enjoyed it so with that all said and done guys make sure you guys all have a great day out there stay safe and i'll see you in the next video goodbye